In this video, we're going to build a TTM Squeeze dashboard that looks like this. A lot of folks have been wondering how we build a dashboard like this in Thinkorswim. It's a lot easier to do in other brokerage platforms like TradeStation, but in this video, we'll show you how to bring that same functionality uh, for Thinkorswim, and you can start to use your favorite indicators in this dashboard to see a wide array of symbols very easily and very quickly. Keep watching this tutorial to learn how to build a dashboard in Thinkorswim. We recently started handing out invites for our new stock volatility box tool. This tool makes it dead easy to run powerful and accurate volatility box models for over 8,200 symbols. Say for example, you wanted to run the volatility box model on Tesla to play Tesla earnings today, along with let's just say the market as a whole, maybe you care to look at AMAT, QQQ, and you could start to put in as many of these symbols as you'd like. You click generate, you can download both the aggressive and conservative volatility box studies, which can be directly imported into Thinkorswim. Inside of Thinkorswim, they look something like this, giving you powerful volatility ranges to start to trade against. In the case of AMAT, you had an opportunity to get long this reversal right here as price fell into our volatility box and then had a really nice reversal after. With the case of Tesla, we had the luxury of being able to use our conservative volatility box models due to it reporting earnings. With this, we had the upper level, the area to go short, plotted as of this candle right here, right? So we had plenty of time to get this trade ready to go, and we knew where to expect price to start to exhaust. That's exactly where price ended up exhausting. We had our first entry as price slammed into our volatility box, and then we had a really nice reversal move after. We had another opportunity as price came into our volatility box, and this ended up being where price started to fizzle, perfectly where our models had guessed that price action would start to exhaust before Tesla then ended up falling for the rest of the day. That's the power of being able to use volatility box models and price movement ranges that you can trust. If you'd like an invite to the stock volatility box tool, go ahead and send us an email at contact at tosindicators.com. Thank you and back to the tutorial. Before we start to build our Thinkorswim dashboard, we want to first make sure that we have a clear idea of what we'd like it to look like. So let's create a quick mock-up using PowerPoint. In PowerPoint, we'll click Insert, uh, and then it will create a table, and let's just give it five uh, columns with two rows, right? And so each row will be represented by a new symbol, uh, but the purpose of this is to define each of these columns so that we have a clear idea of what we're trying to build. Our first column is going to be our symbol. Right? And this is uh, whatever symbol that we're looking at adding. Uh, next, we'd like to have, say, the only the strongest candidates on this dashboard. So we'll add in the concept of stacked moving averages. So let's call that moving averages. Uh, and then after that, we'd like to then measure if there are multiple squeezes. And so for this dashboard, uh, we'll uh, take a look at bigger time frames for swing trading uh, and use the daily one hour and 30 minute squeeze. But if you're looking to say day trade, you may want to make those time frames smaller, right? So for swing trading, we'll use daily squeeze, then we'll say one hour squeeze, and then we'll say 30 minute squeeze with the intention that we'd like to see, say, a symbol like Apple here. Uh, and then if we have, say, uh, moving averages stacked in the bullish direction, then we can see that this background will turn green. Uh, and then if we have a red squeeze that is actually forming and hasn't fired yet, then we'll see a background of red. Uh, same thing with, say, the one hour squeeze. And let's just assume that the 30 minute squeeze has fired. Then we'll see uh, a green bar with fired. Squeeze fired. And then um, now that we think about it, we'd also like to know how many dots there are on the daily and the one hour squeeze. Uh, and so let's go ahead and define that. Um, so we'll, we would say something like squeeze, uh, and then we'll say X uh, dots, right? And this will be the same for both uh, the daily and the one hour squeeze, each with its uh, appropriate period. So here, let's go ahead and also introduce in a concept of a 10 period uh, lens, right? And this will make our job of writing this thing script a lot easier. And let's make a definition that for all of these squeeze timeframes, we'd really only like to have a look back period of 10 uh, X's, right? So in the case of the daily squeeze, um, that is looking back 10 days. In the case of the hourly squeeze, that's looking back 10 hours. And in the case of the 30 minute squeeze, 
That's looking back five hours uh, since it's 30 minutes times 10 uh, of the, the periods. If you want to include other indicators here, that's uh, completely up to you. You can also change the time frame. All of that is fairly easy to do, uh, but the idea is to start to show you how to use these custom quotes in the dashboard and then uh, build in your custom dashboard that fits whatever trading style that you're looking for, whether it's swing, day trading, uh, ETFs, whatever it may be for futures, etc. Now that we have a design of our dashboard, let's go ahead and start actually building it. We don't need any PowerPoint slides anymore, so we'll head back to Thinkorswim. Now, uh, one thing that we talked about in our design is a list of symbols. We needed those symbols uh, in order for this dashboard to actually show, and we'll need it uh, as we're trying to test through this dashboard and work through kinks. So let's go ahead and create that first. To create a watch list, uh, you can do so on the left-hand uh, tab of your Thinkorswim. If you don't see it, you can expand it right here. And if you don't see watch list, you can go ahead and add in a widget right here uh, by clicking this plus icon and then clicking watch list, uh, and then uh, you can hover over indexes and then click create watch list. Here, let's go ahead and start by creating a list of symbols. And the way we want to do this is like a funnel. So we'll go to our blackboard real quick to explain this. So at the base of our funnel, we want our biggest ETFs, our e index markets, uh, and we'd like to go from broad to narrow, right? With the idea being that as we go up this funnel, we have a much more focused group of symbols that we're taking a look at for any trade opportunities. So this funnel might look something like having, uh, say, SPY right here at the very base. And then you might, say, have uh, its ETS, like XLF. And then you may be diving a bit deeper and start to have symbols like Goldman Sachs and JP Morgan at the top of our list uh, that then tell you that, hey, this is where the opportunity currently is in uh, these two symbols, which then helps you focus from here to here fairly quickly. So let's go back to our code. Uh, and our watch list rather, and we'll create our first broad funnel checklist. And we'll call this index ETS. And we'll add in SPY, uh, QQQ. Then we'll add in IWM. Then we can add in DIA. We can also add in gold and then maybe bonds. Uh, and you get the idea, but you can add as many or as few symbols as you would like in this first funnel for the dashboard. Uh, then click save and we have our first watch list created right here. Now let's click market watch at the top right here. And in here we'll go ahead and load up our new watch list. So we called it index ETS. So let's go ahead and load that in index ETS. So let's go ahead and remove our existing uh, quotes right here. So let me pause this video and I'll delete the code uh, so you don't get a sneak peek. Okay, so your watch list should look something like this without any of the quote columns. Right now, to go ahead and add in a quote column, we can click this gear icon right here and click Customize. Once this Customize comes up, uh, you can click this drop down arrow, scroll down, and click Custom Quotes. And there you should have a series of quotes that you can customize. Now, you have a limited number of uh, these watch lists right here that Thinkorswim lets you allow. And so, a quick side note here is Thinkorswim limits the total amount of quotes that you can really run uh, at any given moment. So your watch list columns will start to count towards this total uh, quotes uh, limit that you have along with any custom studies, uh, even in the site on the watch list, so on and so forth. I think the limit is several thousand. However, there is a limit there that you should be aware of. Right? So there's a limit in the total number of lists that you can create as well as uh, the total number of quotes that can be run. Now we'll click custom one, click the scroll icon, and we'll start by tackling the very first condition that we had in our first column, which was stacked moving averages. So let's go ahead and name this moving averages. And we'll start by defining uh, each moving average here. So we can start by saying def uh, EMA eight, and we'll say X average close eight, and then we can close it. And we can now just copy paste this code in uh, for the 13 period moving average. Then we can do the same thing for the 21 period moving average. Then we can do the same thing for the 34. And we can leave it at that, right? And now we'd like to also define two conditions, uh, our bullish and our bearish stack. So for our bullish stack, we'll say def bullish is equal to uh, if 
Actually, we don't even need an if. We can say EMA8 is greater than EMA13, and EMA13 is greater than EMA21, and EMA21 is greater than EMA30, whoops, EMA34, and we can close that off right there. And we can uh, copy and paste this once more uh, for our bearish conditions right here. So we'll say bearish, uh, and this time we'll click less than. Once we have both of these conditions in, we can now create our actual labels that we'll go ahead and uh, use to plot uh, what each of these results may be, right? And this is what shows up with text on the dashboard. So here we'll say add label. Uh, and if we have a bullish stacked, then we'll just say bullish stacked MAs for moving averages. And then we can give this the color of uh, black. And this color is for the actual text. Then we can go ahead and do the same thing for bearish. And we'll say bearish stacked MAs and same color but the backgrounds will be different. Uh, and then we'll go ahead and add in one more condition just so our uh, table's clean, which is if you're not bullish and you're not bearish, this is neither stacked, then we don't want it to say that loading uh, comment that it usually will say in default. And so instead we'll give it a blank open quotations and we'll say color.black as well. Now we want to assign the background color for each of these different scenarios. So we'll bring in our background color function. So sign background color. And we'll say if bullish, then we want the background color to be green. Else, if bearish, then we want the background color to be red. Uh, and then if essentially we have uh, not bullish and not bearish, which is our last condition, then we want the background color to remain black. So if we click OK here, let's go ahead and add in our first condition and see how that looks. OK, so we can see that we have bullish stacked moving averages on the SPY, the Qs, uh, nothing on the Dow, nothing on the Russell, uh, bullish on gold, and bullish on the bonds. Let's see if that actually makes sense on our charts. OK, so I've added in all four of our moving averages. I've left them the same color because all we're trying to see if is if the lines are stacked. We see here that they are, so that makes sense. Um, actually, let's use the actual ETS, but we see that to be also true on gold. We see that to also be true on SPY, even though price is inside of that. Um, and then we see that to also be true in uh, the queues. Right? So that makes sense so far when we have our first moving average column complete. Next, we want to define our columns for the squeezes. So let's go ahead and click Customize once again. We'll click Custom this time. And now we'll open up Custom 2, rename this Daily Squeeze. If your time frame isn't already set to Daily, make sure it's set to the Daily Time Frame Chart. And we'll start by defining what a squeeze actually is, right? And this is the red dot squeeze. And so we'll say Def Squeeze is equal to if TTM squeeze. And we're going to use the built-in uh, default parameters, which is why we don't define anything inside of these parentheses. But if you wanted to change it to any of the other squeeze settings using the back tester, uh, then you could go ahead and define things like close, and then the NK period, so on and so forth. But for this, let's just use the built-in default one and keep going. And the parameter that we care about is squeeze alert. And we want this to be equal to zero, which is the red dot. And if that's uh, true, then return one, else return zero. Now, since we had previously said that we would use the 10 period lens, this makes uh, the concept of looking back the past 10 periods uh, incredibly easy since we can use the sum function. So that's a quick little trick. We'll say def sum squeeze and we'll look to see what is the sum of the past number of trues, so the number of ones uh, with a squeeze over the past 10 bars. Right? And so in this case, it's how many of the past pre or how many of the previous 10 days have a red squeeze dot. And that's what we'll return on our actual label. Now we also need to define what uh, a fired squeeze looks like. So let's say def squeeze fired. And here we want it to have uh, a red dot on the previous bar. So we'll say squeeze, squeeze alert one is equal to zero. And we want the current bar 
to be equal to, uh, the squeeze alert to be equal to one. And if that is true, then return one else returns zero. So now we have what a fired squeeze looks like, which is enough for us to start to build uh, these labels. So we'll say add label squeeze fired. Uh, and so this is if a squeeze is fired, then we want the label to say squeeze fired. And we'll have that print out in a black text font. And now if we do the same thing, but this time for a squeeze, we'll say uh, squeeze count, since we now have that data to print out the number of these dots, and we'll say plus some squeeze. And we'll give this the color of white, since it'll have a background of red for a red dot squeeze. And then we also want the same logic as before, which is if not squeeze fired and not squeeze, then return nothing or put nothing inside of the label so we keep it clean and we'll give this the color of black so that once we have a black background when nothing is true uh, it blends right in and it's nice and clean so we'll say assign background color uh, and if uh, squeeze fired then we want the color to be green uh, else if we have just a regular red squeeze dot then we want the color to be red and if neither of those is true then we want the color to be black now, if we uh, copy this code, we click OK, and we can go ahead and add in the daily squeeze. We'll click OK. We notice none of these charts have a daily squeeze. That's OK. Let's go ahead and copy paste in the code two more times. So we'll click custom three. This time we want a 30 minute chart, so or a one hour chart, excuse me. So we'll say one hour squeeze, one hour. And uh, for this purpose, we'll check uh, no for the extended hours. We'll click OK. Then we can add that to our charts as well. And we'll define this one more time for our 30 minute squeeze. So we'll say 30 minute squeeze. This time uh, clicking 30 minutes, once again, checking that box to be off. Click OK and add that to our charts. And now if we click OK, we have this completed dashboard in which we can see that the queues are the only ones that have a squeeze with our extended hours turned off. Actually, excuse me, sorry, uh, we do need to make sure that we have extended hours on, uh, especially for this market list, uh, which does trade 24 seven, uh, where the extended hours actually matter. So we'll make sure extended hours is turned on for uh, this particular group of symbols. We'll click OK, go back to our charts and make sure we also have extended hours here turned on. And now if we take a look at our market watch, we see that gold is the one with a squeeze count of 10. So if we go to gold, we do in fact see that we have a squeeze forming uh, over the past 10 bars. So that is true. Let's make sure that nothing else also has a squeeze. We'll just do a quick cycle through on the one hour chart. So we'll say SPY, nothing there. The queues, same thing. The squeezes have just fired, which is why this dashboard is now showing black. Uh, but before when the squeeze was actually uh, on, that's when this dashboard would have told you that, hey, there's actually an ongoing squeeze here. So it's useful only when you want it, right? And this then helps us now complete the full dashboard uh, with just the squeeze. Let's now complete the funnel with our uh, next group of holdings. So we'll create our next watch list here. Uh, and in this one, we'll just um, go through and we'll say top ETS. And the ETS that we're going to take a look at are XLF, XLY, XLV, XLP, XLE, and XLU. And now we can click Save. And here we can load in that uh, new ETF watch list. And using our top ETF watch list, we now need to come back. And in this case, they don't trade. Uh, so we need to turn off our extended hours so that we have data that's actually reliable. And here we see that the only thing that has a squeeze that's interesting is XLP with a 10 uh, uh, period or 10 bar rather one hour squeeze. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. We'll make sure we turn off our extended hours here. And we do see the same, uh, same thing here, right? We see XLP does in fact over the past 10 bars have more than enough red dots. So it has in fact been in a squeeze. So our dashboard is working the way we want it to. Now let's go through a real life example of what this looks like in terms of a breakdown of getting to the end of that funnel. 
So in this case, XLP is the one that looks interesting in terms of a one hour squeeze. Now let's break this further and go into XLP's top holdings. So we'll create one more watch list and we'll give this the name XLP holdings. And like this, we've uh, created a comma delineated list of all of the top holdings of the ETS that we've covered in here uh, on the blog post for this tutorial. So you can easily go ahead and copy paste them in using this import function. And that makes it uh, super easy to do. So in XLP, our top holdings are Procter and Gamble, Coca-Cola, uh, then we have Pepsi, then we have Walmart, then we have Costco, then we have Mondelez, then we have MO, then we have PMCL and KMB, right? These are all of our symbols here. Uh, and for those of you that are looking to just import this, you can use that import button, copy paste directly from our site, click import, and Thinkorswim will recognize all the symbols uh, that you've tried to copy paste in. It's kind of a cool nifty feature, but here we'll click save, load in now our XLP holdings. So we'll say XLP holdings. And inside of XLP holdings, we see that the interesting candidate here is Walmart, which has a one uh, or our first uh, squeeze dot on a daily time frame chart. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. We'll pull up Walmart, go to our daily time frame chart, and we see that we do have the beginning of a squeeze dot right here uh, with our moving averages stacked. In fact, in this case, they're actually stacked bearishly, and so the trade bias here would be a bearish trade. Even though the squeeze uh, may currently look like a slingshot squeeze, uh, the actual histogram bar is still below zero, which indicates a negative squeeze, along with our moving averages stacked bearishly with our 34, then our 21, then our 13, then our 8 period, and price consolidating inside of our moving averages. Right, But you can see how quickly we were able to get down to that area of focus to, know, to go from uh, essentially XLP to Walmart, However, something that's interesting is in XLP, our moving averages are st stacked bearishly, but the ETF that we use to get to uh, Walmart, XLP, is actually stacked bullishly, right? So that also tells you what is a counter trend trade inside of XLP. Now, you see XLP did have a nice burst move up higher today with a 1.19% move, but the dashboard helps you then identify where squeezes are currently taking place. Right, so now if we came into our dashboard here, and let's say you wanted to look for opportunities, but bullish opportunities uh, in XLP, we could come in and we could lower our time frame, uh, and that helps us start to look for opportunities on a, a smaller time frame chart. Right, and so we could now instead of looking at a 30 minute, we'll start with a 15 minute. Make sure extended hours turned off. We can come in, edit this formula, and we'll change this to say a five minute, uh, and then you might be say looking at a three minute. And this is for those of you that are looking to aggressively get into any of these positions. Now we see that on a 15 minute chart, we have Procter and Gamble and uh, Coca-Cola. So let's take a look at PG. It is in fact uh, stacked bullishly, right? And so our squeeze is on a 15 minute time frame chart. And so if we take a look on our 15 minute time frame, we do see that we have a pretty strong squeeze starting to build up. And then same thing with Coca-Cola. If we take a look at Coke, and our dashboard gives us all this information pretty quickly too, right? Because we see that we have bullish stacked moving averages on the daily chart here. Uh, and then we have uh, squeezes starting to build up. This is the 15 minute that we've just changed it to for finding more opportunities. But you can see how easy it is, right? Similarly now, if you wanted to also just add the 15 and the five as two additional columns, you can also very easily do that by just clicking custom and copy pasting the same code in uh, a few more times or as many times as you want um, to have your different time frame charts. So hopefully through this tutorial, you've learned how to go from having to have multiple charts to look at uh, different charts, different tickers, uh, having multiple uh, ETF holdings, uh, the breakdowns of each ETFs, take all of that and compress that into a very clean dashboard that looks something like this, right? It's easy to use, it's effective, uh, it's easy to change symbols, right? We can just come in here uh, and you can use the list that we have, but it's as easy to go from XLP holdings to say going to our broader ETFs, right? If we say looked at our sector funds in XLE, for example, uh, it's as easy as making that change where you have all of this information available at your fingertips just like that. 
And that is why I think a dashboard is a pretty cool feature. Uh, and then the last thing that we'll cover in this tutorial is how to detach it. Uh, and the way to do so is by clicking this hamburger actions menu right here and clicking detach. Make sure you click the hamburger menu that's at the top. There's two of them here. Uh, the top one is the one that has the detach functionality. And here you can then start to resize this uh, however you'd like to fit, say, in uh, the corner of your screen. You can make it as small as you'd like, depending on as many symbols as you have. Uh, shrink it. Maybe you could uh, start to train your eyes to only look at these labels to so start to find red and then looking uh, to find opportunities once you see only these red labels plot, right? depending on what kind of uh, trader you are. All right. Hope this tutorial helped you all. Thank you for watching the 14th episode. If you'd like the code for uh, any of the squeezes or the moving averages, both of them are available on our website. All right. Take care, everyone, and we'll see you in the next tutorial.